Welcome back to the deep dive. So we're diving into AI and drug discovery this time, uh -huh. how it could help us live longer. We've got, um, let's see, a scientific presentation and an interview with uh, Dr. Ivan de Weber. He's the CEO of Cortex Discover. Yeah. And what's amazing is how his personal story kind of ties into all this. Like, imagine as a kid having this realization about death and it sparks, you know, this whole quest for, uh, for extending life. It's really wild, like that aha moment. But for him, it shapes his whole career, right? Mm -hmm. PhD in aging genetics and then... Bam, co-founds Cortex Discover. That makes you wonder, you know, how those early moments affect us. For sure. It's like personal motivation driving, uh, driving innovation. Yeah. And Cortex Discover's goal, ambitious to say the least. They want to use AI to like revolutionize drug discovery, especially for treatments that can make us live way longer. Not just tweaking things here and there, right? They're using get this deep craft neural networks. Honestly, before this deep dive, that sounded like, I don't know, Star Trek stuff to me. But it's actually like the core of what they do. Yeah. It is a mouthful, no doubt. But think right. of it like like um like a giant web of data each point is a molecule and it's got like all its properties attached and the ai it's like this super detective analyzing that web to figure out how it compound will it work against say cancer is it toxic stuff like that they can predict like two thousand different properties for any molecule whoa so it's like a chemist who's read every book run millions of experiments all in its head and here's where it gets really exciting one of the biggest problems with drug discovery is speed right it takes years decades even to get a new drug out there. Cortex Discover says their AI could do it way faster, maybe even in months. That's the game changer. We're not talking about small improvements. This is a whole different ball game, and that's speed. Yeah. It means saving money too. Billions maybe? Money that could go back into more research. So faster, cheaper, sounds amazing. But how's it actually work? Well, they say there's three main ways their AI is changing. First, there's this virtual high throughput screening, basically like testing millions of compounds, but on a computer, not in a real lab. Huge efficiency boost. Like running a zillion experiments at once, but virtual. And that leads to the second thing, predicting all these props, not just one or two. Traditional methods, they couldn't do that, but Cortex's AI can predict side effect, toxicity, the whole shebang. So they can find what works, but also weed out the dangerous, talk about safe. And the third thing, this is where my mind is blown, they can actually discuss discover whole new types of molecules. Not just tweaking what we already have, right? They can create totally new compounds, ones that never exist for, with the exact properties they want. Imagine the possibilities for like brand new treatments, unlike anything we've got now. And the key is it's not just theory. They're actually making these compounds and testing them in the real world. And that's where their proof of concept studies come in. Pretty impressive stuff. During COVID, they used their AI on six compounds predicting antiviral activity. Five out of six actually worked in the lab and none were toxic at the dose that worked. That's like lightning speed for drug discovery. Think how long it usually takes to find new antiviral. With COVID, time was like everything. Cortex's AI showed it could find promising stuff super fast. Not just a one-time thing either. They worked with Stanford, found new antivirals there too. It's not limited to just one disease or research area. Exactly. It shows that this tech could be used for drug discovery across the board, like a platform. And they didn't stop there. Cancer research too. They found compounds that kill cancer cells super accurately, matching what you'd see in real experiments. Okay, this is where my brain starts to spin. Think of what that could mean. Cancer treatments that are more targeted, maybe with fewer side effects, could be a game changer for, well, a disease that affects so many people. It's a glimpse into a future where AI could help us tackle some of the biggest diseases we face. But remember, Cortex Discover isn't about just any disease. It's about aging itself. That's where Dr. DeWeber's uh, personal mission comes full circle. Right. This isn't just about any drug. It's about drugs that could actually make us live longer. Fulfilling that, uh, that childhood quest of his, they're focused on longevity research research, hitting those pathways we think control aging. It's like a puzzle. And they're looking for the pieces that, you know, control how we age. They're looking at MTOR, NRF2, HDAC, heat shock proteins, all these things hide to how we age. So not just treating diseases, but delaying or even reversing aging itself. That's some next level stuff. Hmm. And they're already sending compounds for testing in vitro and in vivo using C. elegant, those tiny worms they use in aging research. Early days, of course. But the fact that they're already testing is a sign of how ambitious they are. They're not just happy with, like, Computer models, they want to see if this stuff can actually make a living thing live longer. Hold on a sec. AI is powerful, sure. But can it really make compounds that actually work? I mean, you hear about those AI hallucinations. It spits out something that looks good on paper but can't actually be made. You're right to be skeptical. That's a real problem with some AI. But Cortex discovered they do things differently. They focus on making compounds that can actually be synthesized based on real-world data. They even work with a company that makes compounds to make sure their predictions are actually doable, not just made up molecules. Okay, that makes me feel a bit better. Yeah. So we've got this company founded by a guy who like had this childhood thing about mortality using crazy powerful AI to maybe possibly develop drugs that could
could make us live longer. Mm -hmm. It's like science fiction becoming reality. Totally. And it brings up so many questions. Can AI really make that longer life happen? What would it mean for society? And maybe the biggest question, is it something we even want? Things we'll dig into more as we go and dive. First, I think we should uh, unpack some of the technical stuff behind how Cortex Discover does. For sure. We've got the basics down. Now let's dive deeper into the science. What's this QSR thing and how does it all fit into this puzzle? We'll explore that right after this. So QSR, right? Quantitative Structure Activity Relationship. Kind of mouthful, but it's like super important in drug discovery. And Cortex Discover, they're taking it to a whole new level with AI. Okay, lay it on me. QSR, what is it? Why is it so important? Imagine um, you've got this huge jigsaw puzzle, but instead of a picture, you're trying to make something happen in the body, a specific effect. Each piece of the puzzle is like part of a molecule structure. How those pieces fit together determines how that molecule interacts with, say, a protein involved in aging. QSR is all about figuring those relationships out, you know, how changing a molecule changes what it does. So it's like a recipe, but instead of ingredients, you're messing with molecules, seeing how they affect the final uh, product. Yeah, good way to put it. Traditional QSIR was a lot of trial and error, testing tons of molecules. But Cortex Discover, they're using deep learning to like supercharge the whole. Their AI looks at massive data sets, molecular structures, and what they do, finding these crazy patterns that we could never see. It's like they're training the AI to be a master chemist, predicting how molecules will act super precisely. So instead of just testing stuff randomly in the lab, they use the AI to like zero in on the best options. Exactly. It's like a virtual lab, right? right. Analyzing millions of possibilities in like a blink of an eye compared to the real world. Way faster drug discovery, saving time and money. But what's really wild is that Cortex isn't just finding molecules that already exist. They're making totally new ones with specific properties. Wait, so not just finding the needle in the haystack, but making new needles. How is that even possible? Their AI can actually generate uh, new molecular structures, ones that have never existed before, but they have the exact properties they need to target specific aging path, like an AI artist. But instead of paint, it's using chemistry to make brand new new molecule. Okay, that's just, but how do they know these AI molecules will actually work? I mean, going from a computer model to a real treatment, that's a huge jump. You're right, and that's why they're already testing their AI's predictions. They make these new compounds and test them, starting with in vitro studies, then moving to in vivo testing with C. elegans. C. elegans, those tiny worm talk. So they're using them to see if these AI designed molecules actually affect lifespan. Yep, crucial first step, right? Gotta see if these compounds deliver on their promise. C. elegans is great for this kind of research, short lifespan. We we know a lot about how they age. So they're using the worms to get a sneak peek at how these compounds might affect aging in, well, more complex things. What are they looking for in these studies? They want to see if their compounds can make these worms live longer and health too. They'll check things like, you know, how long they live, how they move, how they handle stress. If they see good results in C. elegans, it's a good sign they're on the right track. Sounds promising, but I'm guessing it's still a long way from good results in worms to treatments for people. What happens next if these early trials go well? Oh, absolutely. It's a marathon, not a Sprint. If the C. elegans studies are good, they'll move on to more complex animals, probably mice. That'll give them more info on safety and how well it works in mammals, getting them closer to testing. Seems like there's a real race going on to figure out aging, right? All this interest in longevity research, companies like Google's Calico, Altos Labs, Jeff Bezos, everyone's after that longer life. It's an exciting time to be following this stuff, wouldn't you say? Feels like we're on the edge of some big discoveries that could totally change how we think about aging. And with companies like Cortex Discover using AI, the pace of discovery is like going through the roof. So what you're saying is this is just the tip of the iceberg. What else could be out there? Think about it. Cutting edge tech, more investment and more scientific knowledge every day. It's like a perfect storm for innovation in uh, in longevity. Mm -hmm. It's not crazy to think that in the next few years we could see treatments that actually slow down, maybe even reverse. That's a bold statement, <laughs> but I got to be a bit cautious here. Extending lifespan. Yeah, that's huge. But aren't there risks, challenges we need to think about too? You're right to bring that up. It's great to be optimistic about longevity, but we got to be smart about it. We can't just mess with the fundamental process of aging without being super careful. So it's not just about living longer. It's about making sure those extra years are good years, good quality life. Exactly. We don't want people living longer, but feeling worse, right? The goal is longevity and health span, those years where you're healthy and feeling good. And that brings up another thing, access. If these longevity treatments actually happen, who gets them? Will it be for everyone or just for the rich and powerful? That's a big one. And we need to be careful about it. We don't want to make the health gap even bigger. You know, these breakthroughs, they should be for everyone, no matter how much money they have. It's about fairness and doing the right thing. Seems like the ethics of living longer are just as complicated as the science itself. We need to be responsible about all this, knowing that the choices we make now 
will shape the future for everyone. Absolutely. It's not just about the science, it's about what it means to be human. How these advancements change how we think about life itself. We need to be having these conversations, thinking about the ethics, the social and economic impacts. It's got to be a holistic approach. This deep dive has really shown how complex this whole topic is, mm. right? It's not just science and tech. It's about what it means to be human and how all this could change how we understand life itself. And this is just the beginning. We're at this point where powerful forces are coming together. Technology, science, and that deep human desire to live longer, healthier lives. The next few years are going to be wild with amazing progress, huge challenges. We got to be ready for both. Well, this has definitely given me a lot to think about. We've covered so much from the nitty gritty of QSRR to like the big picture of what it means to extend human lifespan. Yeah, it's the kind of stuff that makes you excited and makes you think hard. But before we get too lost in the future, let's come back to the present for a sec. We've talked about Cortex Discover's goals, how they do things, but what are they actually targeting in their quest to, you know, tweak aging? That's where things get so Cortex Discover wants to actually change aging, not just the diseases, right? Yeah. And they're not putting all their eggs in one basket either. They're going after multiple pathways, like trying to hack the aging code from all sides. Good analogy. They're looking at MTOR, NRF2, HDSCs, and heat shock proteins, all involved in how cells age. Like tuning an orchestra, but instead of music, it's longevity. Okay, I'm hooked. Let's break it down first. MTOR, what's the deal there? MTOR, it's a mechanistic target of rapamycin. It's a protein, kind of like a control center for cell growth and metabolism, sets the pace for what happens in the cells. So if it's the control center, what are they trying to change? Well, some studies show that if you inhibit MTOR signaling, basically slow it down, you can actually make things live longer from yeast to mice. It's like slowing the pace so the cells don't wear out so fast. So slowing down makes you live longer. That's like the opposite of what you'd think. It seems that way, right? But it's all about balance. Too much activity and the cells get worn down. Too little, and that's bad too. Modulating MTOR, it's tricky, but it could be a way to slow down aging. Cool. Okay, next up, NRF2, what's that about? NRF2, it's like the body's defense system against oxidative stress. Stands for nuclear factor, erythroid 2 related factor 2. But hmm. just think of it as uh, the protector against free radicals, those things that damage our cells. So like a shield for our cells against, you know, aging damage. Exactly. NRF2 activates all these antioxidant defenses, fights off those free radicals. Boosting NRF2 is like making that shield stronger so our cells are tougher against damage. Okay, getting the pattern here, MTR, slow it down. NRF2, boost it up. Now, HDACs, where do they fit in? HDAC, that's histone decetylase. Think of our DNA like an instruction manual, and HDACs are the editors choosing which parts get read. They work by uh, modifying histones, those proteins DNA wraps around, that controls which genes are accessible. So they can switch genes on or off? Kinda, yeah. And there's evidence that if you inhibit HDACs, basically let certain genes be expressed more, it can be good for aging. Some of those genes might be involved in living longer and handling stress better. So they're like fine-tuning the genes to be more youthful. That's a great way to put it. It's complicated stuff, but it shows how we might be able to change gene expression to affect. All right, last one. Heat shock protein. What's their role in all? Heat shock proteins or HSPs, they're like the emergency team for our cells. When cells get stressed, like from heat or toxins, HSPs jump in to repair damaged proteins, keep things working. So like a cleanup crew after a a cellular disaster. Yeah, exactly. But as we get older, we make fewer HSPs. That means our cells are more vulnerable, which can lead to, you know, all those age-related diseases. Ah, I see. So if we boost HSPs, it could help our cells stay healthy even as we age. Right. There's more and more research showing that boosting heat shock proteins could help fight age. Wow, it's incredible to think we might actually be close to treatments that could change these core parts of aging. Exciting times, for sure. But gotta remember, it's still early days for the surge. There's so much more to learn about aging before we can make safe and effective Treat. True. We're talking about changing like the essence of life itself. Got to be careful with that. But I'm optimistic, cautiously optimistic. The potential benefits are just too big to ignore. Cautious optimism. I like that. Living longer and healthier. It's something we all want, right? And with AI, researchers like those at Cortex discover, who knows? This deep dive has been amazing. We've explored the cutting edge of science and this idea that aging might not be the inevitable decline we thought it was. What's the biggest takeaway for you from all this? I think it's how Dr. DeWeber's personal story connects with the power of AI. It's about human ingenuity, pushing the limits of what's possible. It makes you wonder, what else can we do that seems impossible, right? A great question to think about. And I think this is just the beginning of the story. We'll definitely mm. be keeping an eye on Cortex Discover and all the amazing things happening in longevity research. Thanks for joining us on this incredible deep dive.